banks. The engine's known for keeping our economy regulated, but as we develop, banks seem to be getting more outdated with each passing day. Which brings us to the question, are banks going to eventually run out of business? And if they are, well, how will the world change without them? Before we continue, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're a big fan of crypto and want to learn more about it. How could the end of banks change the way we live? With technology progressing, we have found it better to use digital currency instead of traditional paper money. Everyone nowadays would rather just have a simple card in their wallet or use a money exchange app instead of $200. But will the revolution of digital currencies have dramatic consequences more than just getting banks out of business? How will it impact the stability of the entire financial system? system, consumer privacy, and government power. It's not just the simple digital currency we're using nowadays that is taking over, it's crypto. Whether you've already invested in it or thought about investing, crypto's been booming in the last couple of years. Its decentralized structure helps businesses and people gain more power over their finance and have control of the strategies they're willing to use to duplicate their money. And as difficult as it is to imagine how different the world would be with cryptocurrency being the lead in economy stability, it's still has a huge chance of happening within the next 100 years. You might have heard of Bitcoin or other digital money that is supposed to disrupt banks and change how the economy works. However, it is still relatively small when compared to banks. Shortly explained, banks kind of run the world for the moment. So we're left with two options here. Either crypto will take full charge, or banks will be smart enough to use the crypto ideology to gain even more power. And here's how it might end up working. Most central bank money is held by commercial banks is reserves, against the deposits people like you and me make. You can only access a small amount of this government-made money with paper money and coins which are issued by the central bank. In the UK, paper money is even signed by the chief cashier of the Bank of England. But banks are not as slow with catching up with the new era of technology. As we speak, they're developing a more efficient way to switch from physical to digital money. A central bank digital currency, or CBDC, is a bit like digital cash and it gives the consumer a direct relationship with a central bank. So, in theory, instead of keeping your money in a commercial bank, you could hold all of your money in the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England. CBDCs are only being used or trailed in a couple of developed countries around the world, but they're surely growing fast as 80% of central banks are considering issuing them in the near future. The Bank of International Settlements says that a fifth of the world will live in countries that will only use digital money in just a few years. Combine this with the further development of crypto, and this could change the whole economic system as we're used to it today. If everyone put their money into a CBDC, and their savings and investment in cryptocurrency, then fractional reserve banks could potentially be out of business pretty soon. This could affect economic growth for a couple of years, especially for people who are in debt, as they could not rely on consumer deposits to finance their loans. And believe it or not, if this would happen, the people that would be affected are the ones living in developed countries, where most lending still comes from banks. Of course, this could be resolved in less than a decade, with only some minor damages made to the economy. But there are also concerns about cyber warfare, because if you can take down the servers and support the central bank digital wallet system, then we could be shutting down an entire economy. If this happens, we could either go through a catastrophe, or crypto would be the only way out of this mess. And with crypto being our only option for economic stability, then the state will pretty much lose its power of interaction in everyday transactions. Since crypto is still developing, it will surely change and transform a lot to be secure if it takes full control of the way people purchase services and products through it. However, we can't talk much about this, only the fact that there might be a possible route. People are still unsure about how crypto will transform to be more reliable, because now, it's still much of a gamble as it crashes and goes up unpredictably. With all this being said, crypto taking over is still something far in the future. And for it to happen, billions of people have to go out of their comfort zone and suffer from major economic problems. That's why, based on many predictions, people will be more comfortable using the digital currency banks will provide them with. But this comes with its own cons, as it will become much easier for governments to completely block your ability to pay for something they don't want you to purchase. Supporters of this kind of digital currency claim they could lead to a world where most people have access to financial services where it'll be cheaper and easier to 
move money across borders. But innovations like this could also disrupt the financial equilibrium and give governments much more power over the money and lives of people. So how could banks run out of business in the first place? Will people just stop using them? The fundamental principles of banking have been the same for centuries and revolve around the greatest magic trick of all, how to produce money. It's called fractional reserve banking. It actually started hundreds of years ago when banks stored gold for investors, but they realized it was unlikely everyone would claim their gold back at the same time. So they began to loan some of the gold deposits out to other people. The idea was genius at the time and helped power the economy by allowing idle deposits to fuel new business and trade so businesses were considered the bank's fuel. As time went on, banks started issuing banknotes rather than giving out physical gold, and these notes eventually started being traded in the real world on a daily basis. But there was a problem. The number of notes was much larger than the value of gold held by the banks. The bank's lending had just created a new currency, paper money. The transition from gold exchange to money did have some negative impact with investors, but the idea of exchange paper money was perceived pretty well by the general population. Nowadays, something similar is happening. When the banks make a loan, it creates a new asset on its balance sheet and credits the borrower's account with new funds, which creates a new deposit. The fundamental principle is the same. Every time the bank makes a new loan, it creates new money. But now, banks are financing a similar problem they had with gold. There is so much money you can print out without causing inflation. So with the development of technology, today's almost 90% of the money in the world is digital deposits that have been created by banks. This is hugely important for the economy, as it makes the supply of money very elastic. This will make banks transform once more rather than run out of business, but this time, they don't have the biggest supporters by their side. Businesses. Tech businesses might be the start of banks losing their current power. For a start, an increasing number of businesses no longer rely on banks for loans. This is because businesses historically used to create concrete assets, like machinery, which banks were happy to lend. They could always claim the assets if the borrower stopped repaying, but intangible assets like software can't be easily posted as security for a bank loan. The world has shifted in a way that makes it hard for banks to fund them. If you want to get funding for a Silicon Valley startup, in general, you'll need to go to people who are equity investors, so they take a slice of your business in return for lending you money. And it's not just innovative startups that are turning elsewhere for funding, it's also big businesses. Non-bank loans and securities have risen sharply. This means that the role banks play in financing important businesses is receding. To say the truth, banks are already starting to lose power. It is just the beginning. And if they aren't smart enough, then the power they have over the economy will go to someone else. One of the most popular digital currency exchanges in China for the moment is Alipay from tech giant Ant Group. It has over a billion users and handled $12 billion in payments in 2019. Rather than using bank cards to make payments, Alipay customers Customers carry out transactions by loading money into digital wallets. They can then do anything from buying lunch to investing in stocks and shares, all with one simple app. And rather than paying expensive international transaction fees to their bank, Alipay users can also use the app overseas. You're already seeing this in America and Europe, with apps like Binance for crypto transactions, PayPal, and an upcoming currency developed by Facebook called Libra. If these ways of payment take over, banks will eventually lose all power within the next generation. But who do you think will take over? Will banks remain or will crypto and digital currency further develop and put an end to banks once and for all? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video.